this master cylinder to get it out. It's right under there. Hi there, this is Ray with Easy Simple Mechanic. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna get back on this uh, Goldwing, this uh, GL1500. We're gonna see if we can't get that master cylinder replaced and get the brake pads uh, changed out all the way around and change out the brake fluid. Then we'll see if we don't have time to get a ride in. So the first thing you gotta do is remove these two pieces. These are the pieces that go right here in the front behind the wheel. And really all there is is a couple of grommets on the top piece. And then it just uh, goes into this, uh, this bottom piece right here. And then the bottom piece just has some little screws that hold it in. There's one right there. There's another on the, on the other side and one on this side. And on the side here, the first thing you gotta do is remove this uh, passenger foot peg. Uh, if the foot peg is down, cause these are adjustable, you have to turn this knob right up here. You turn the knob as you do that this is spring loaded and it'll come up and it'll give you access to those two bolts that are right there uh, you got to take those off to be able to get to everything else the master cylinders in behind these shields uh, but to get to those you got to remove this piece here oops you got to remove this piece which is the the cover for the exhaust on this side and you gotta pull those pieces off the front first cause you gotta get to a, a bolt that goes on the front that holds that piece on. And then you've got your cable that works. There's, there's a little vent window here. Uh, and then you can pull the rest of them off, pull that piece. So we're just gonna leave that hanging there. I knew this forklift would come in handy for something. Uh, so I don't have to work sitting down uh, what I did here, just in case you guys want to see, I went ahead and raised it up with a forklift, but I went ahead and strapped it down so it wouldn't fall off. Uh, so just to make sure that it's it's held on there. Now I did put it right on the edge because I'm going to need to pull off this exhaust right here, at least loosen it. Because this master cylinder, to get it out, it's right under there. And I don't know if it'll come out because... This shield that's right here has to come out unless I unbend the heck out of it. But if I can get it out without the exhaust coming off, I'll do that. If not, then we're going to have to pull the exhaust. Also got to pull the battery and then pull this battery tray because there's the hose that goes from the reservoir. It goes all the way in behind here over to there and then you've got the two lines that hook up to the master cylinder here for the brake fluid well it looks like uh, we're able to get to it without removing the exhaust basically there's a little screw right down in there i guess you can see it that you can sneak a long extension between the exhaust pipe and that shield and it holds both of those little shields on. If you pull that screw off, you'll be able to get the shielding off. Then you can get to these two screws here and be able to pull the, the C-clip right here on the cylinder here. We've already taken off the uh, this line here. We just need to get to the other one, but uh, by pulling these two screws here, we'll be able to pull this back a little bit to, to get to that back one. But let's move, uh, let's remove this battery box next.
you gotta you gotta take this little clamp off to remove that from the master cylinder uh, that's the reservoir hose so that we can pull this hose off just like that and then the only thing left we've got is to try and get that that last uh, bolt or that last line off of there so I guess I'm gonna try and get in through that little hole with the wrench and see if I can knock that loose. That, that looks like the only way out right there. So I'm gonna try and get a wrench in there and see if we can't do that. And then there's a, I guess it's for the brake switch. There's a wire that comes up and plugs into somewhere up here. So I'm gonna have to chase that one down. Goes up here. You'll have to pull this bolt right here that holds the seat in and kind of move this cover out of the way to get this uh, wire unplugged. Now, in my case, this is a red one. I think the one that I got was a blue, but just trace it down there. There's a couple of little clamps that hold these cables together. But there is a, a little, like a little uh, holder for those connectors. And so if you just kind of pull this back a little bit, you can pull on the connector from the back side and it'll come right out. And then it'll allow you to push in the clip on this to be able to pull it out of that connector. Uh, that's how you get that wire out. So that's all we got left now, just that line. And we'll see if we can't get that cylinder out of there. I guess uh, we're going to have to pull this exhaust loose after all, because there's just no way to get that other line off of there. So we just had to loosen the exhaust and pull it down. We didn't really have to remove this bracket yet. At least I hope we don't have to. Just enough to drop that exhaust pipe in there where we could get back in there with a wrench. Then of course this just comes right out of there once you get that. Now that line there is a bugger to get to. So we wanna make sure that we get that nice and tight when we put the new one in there. So we don't want that to leak because we won't be able to get to it. So now let's clean this all up and we'll get uh, the new master cylinder and we'll go ahead and get it on here. Well, you can see what I had to use to get that line connected back up to the new master cylinder is uh it's one of those uh, ratchet uh box end wrenches but man that was a challenge to get that started i had to pull this little piece off the top of the master cylinder and use some some of these plastic ties right here to hold the line just right so that I could get it started onto the, the back of the master cylinder. And then just as I held with one hand, uh, held the master cylinder with one hand, I was just about, I'm only getting about one click at a time out of this wrench. So, um, uh, as long as you get a tooth or two started, then you can go ahead and tighten. My only challenge will be to be able to get that piece back on there, that filler piece back on this uh, master cylinder once we get it on there. So my goal is to go ahead and get this fairly snug, not, not snug, but leave it loose and then go ahead and put the uh, filler little tube back in it 
and that way we can uh yeah so that we'll get this back on there and see if we can get that screw in it before we bolt it down to the frame here there's quite a bit of dexterity to do that so let me get this one tightened up i'm gonna use both hands here let me get this tightened up and then uh we'll try and get that little piece back in there that goes right on top there So there, I got it. That little piece is in there. You gotta use a long Phillips to get all the way in there so you can get that screw back in there. Uh, so that's the challenge. So now let's see if we can't get this uh, line tightened up on the backside and get the rest of this put, put together. I don't know if you saw that, but uh, I had to change out this little piece here because it wasn't the same on this master cylinder. And then the other thing is it looks like the switch for the brake light switch is a little bigger on this unit than it was on mine. Okay, so we finished putting this together. Uh, we got our master cylinder hose back on there. So here's our reservoir here. Um, we got that, we put our battery back in, we got our negative connected, positive connected with our little wires here, and then our little battery strap that goes, we connected our exhaust back up in here, so we got it connected back onto there, and we tightened the clamp on the back of the exhaust there, and then we put the cover back on here. This bottom cover, we got it installed. Okay, so it's those two screws. We'll just put those back in there. Okay, is that these steps, that they have this scissor on them. I'm sorry, this scissor right in here. And so when you have this step out, the step's normally gonna be in this position and it has this little uh, cover on here. Okay. And so this little cover kind of covers this thing up right there. There's two little screws that hold it up. When you pull the little screws off, if you try and get in there to get the step or this whole piece off, this whole piece that's right here, you can't get it off unless you pull this step off. So it's really hard to get to and most people, I couldn't find an explanation how to do that, but I finally figured out it had this lever right here that if you push it, then it releases the step. When you pull that little cover off, you can pick this up and you can get to those Allen head screws right in there and the whole thing comes off. Uh, just so you guys see how that goes back together. Okay, once you get this, uh, all these covers on, the last cover to go on is this cover. And it just has, uh, it just pops into a slot right there. A slot down here in the bottom. Let's see if I can get it in there. Okay, and then it's got a little grommet right there. And there it is. 
So if you ever need to check your oil, it's in behind here. That's where the oil dipstick is. Now we got these pieces up front here, uh, but I'm gonna wait on those to, to put those on until after I get the brakes done. When I work on the front brakes, we'll put those covers on last. Okay, this is the saddle bag here. Uh, and if you go in here, you'll see where the bleeder is. There's a little cover here and there's the bleeder for the back brakes. Um, I'm just gonna bleed the brakes to see if the master cylinder has any leaks before we change the pads on this. As you can see, we got some fluid coming out of there, but since I don't have any help to bleed these, I'm gonna have to uh, get a hose and do some uh, old fashioned type brake bleeding by putting a hose on it and running it into some fluid so that it, uh, so that I can just open it and go over there and pump it and then come and shut off the valve. Well, it got late last night, uh, but I went ahead and, and bled the front brakes, replaced the front brake pads. Uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, in fact, uh, you can probably find several channels on YouTube that show how to bleed the brakes in the front and how to uh, change the pads. Now, this one here, I left uh, the cover off because this brake on the left side works with the rear brake for the master cylinder so when i bleed uh that one after i'm completely done uh then i want to make sure that i that i'm able to bleed both this cylinder and the one in the back so um anyhow uh it looks like uh that's pretty much it we're gonna go ahead and change the rear brake pads uh so that's what i'm gonna do now but it looks like we've got some some storms coming in so i'm hoping that we can get it all done before uh, it starts pouring on me uh so let's see if we can get that done man this forklift sure is coming in handy check it out making this uh pretty easy this is pretty stable so i'm really happy with uh with the way this is working out, it's allowing me to actually work on this a little bit easier. So let's get going on this uh, pulling off. I gotta pull off this cover to get to the brake pads. There is a little deal in there to go ahead and um, you open the trunk or the uh, saddlebags through there. Yeah, I had showed you there's a little hole in there for bleeding, but there's not enough room in there to pull the the caliper off. So what we have to do is we have to pull this saddle bag off to get to the brake pads. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and get that done real quick. I'll show you guys as we go along. So first thing we're gonna do is we pull these little clips. They go right over the screw holes there. And there's one on this side here. Oh, let me close that. It's right here. We pull those off to get the screws off that go there. And then on the inside, see, we just got this uh, mat in here. It says uh, Goldwing on it. So we'll take that out. And then we'll pull this, uh, this little emergency kit or this tool kit out so we can get to the bolts that hold the saddlebag in. So we'll just set that out. Okay. And now we're just gonna be taking off this bolt, this bolt, that bolt, and this bolt here. Uh, also, we gotta disconnect the cable to unlock the uh, this uh, saddle bag door so we'll have to, to take that off and it's just a, there we go we just unclip that little plastic piece and then we got to take the 
the plastic piece off of it. Oh, there it goes. See, it's just this little plastic piece. And that's what clamps right up onto that saddlebag uh, lever there to unlock it. So we got to take that off because we're going to have to push the cable out to be able to, and you can't see it here, but I'll show you when I get the saddlebag out. I'll show you the cable. It's kind of up in here. But we got to squeeze it so we can pull it out or push it. We'll push it out. And when we go to put it back in, we'll put that in before we bolt down the saddlebag. And then to get the saddlebag off, we also need to pull off this little trim that goes along here. And that has four bolts underneath or screws that are in these deep uh, sockets or deep galleys in the back underneath here. So I guess you can see them there. See those, there's four of them. One, two, three, four. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then uh, we'll pull those bolts off and see if we can't get the saddlebag off. Okay, once you pull those four screws that hold this up, this just pops down and then it's latched in on the front on both sides. So we just yank that. Yeah, we got this helmet holder here. So there we go. We can take that piece off. Check, it the, check out those clouds. Is that weird? Check it out. It's almost like spelling in the sky. Check it out. That's coming my way. So let's continue with this and see if we can't get to this before it gets too crazy here. to be able to get a pedal see that's nice and firm now but in order to get a pedal you have to press this hold it down while loosening the banjo just real quick open and close it'll bleed the master cylinder first because if you've got air in here it's never going to build pressure to the uh, calipers on the wheels so you need to bleed this master cylinder first before you bleed the, the calipers and then once you get some pressure even a little bit once you start getting some pressure then you can go ahead and bleed the front brake which is further away and then the back brake but it doesn't matter because they both connect to the master cylinder right here it doesn't have a T anywhere else so it doesn't matter which one you do first Well, folks, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Now, in the previous forklift videos, you guys noticed something in the background. 
and there was a vehicle sitting in the background behind the forklift um, that'll give you a clue as to what's next but stay tuned and we'll catch you next time